and make a re reportage about those two guys. And Performed by Jay Huntsberger and his accompanist, Ruth Morrow. Well, did you enjoy that? I'm sure you have many questions about the tuba, 
or the music, or about the musician, Jay Hunsberger. Come right up to the microphone now and let's have a conversation. How many different kinds of tubas are there? Well, uh, this tuba that I just played is in F, and there are larger tubas which are in B flat and C, and then you have the sousaphones that you see on the marching band field, and then in a few minutes you'll get to hear the euphonium, which is even smaller, and really all the brass instruments are just extensions of the tuba family. Who invented the tuba? Well, the tuba evolved out of earlier instruments, and uh, it, we couldn't have this tuba until they invented the valve, which occurred around 1812 and in the early part of the 1800s. And uh, it evolved out of the alpha clyde and earlier instruments like that. Is the tuba hard to learn to play? Uh, no, it's very easy to learn to play. Its sound is so beautiful that uh, you really learn to play it and you like it a lot and it's a lot of fun. So when something's fun, it's not, not hard to do. Is the tuba very heavy? Well, it's not too heavy at all because actually all these tubes that you see are hollow. So it looks a lot heavier than it is. Why don't you come here and, and pick it up yourself and see how heavy it is. It's not too bad. No. It's not bad at all. Thanks. Thanks. How do you make the notes? Well, you make the notes uh, by using your air and by hearing them, but especially by your lips and your embouchure, which is how we form our lips. If you come here a minute, I'll show you what to do. First, we just start by buzzing our lips, just like. Can you try it? Just. That's good. That's good. That's that's about it. Why don't you hold this? Now try to just do the same thing into the mouthpiece. Good. That's really good. Here we have a natural. Why don't you try that now? Just into the tuba. Just doing the same thing with buzzing, buzzing your lips. Oh. It's pretty good. So that's how we form the notes, and by making our embouchure different, we can go higher and lower. What do the valves do? Well, the tuba is basically like a bugle that you would hear on uh, the plays taps and reveille and stuff like that. And without any valves, we can only get a certain number of notes. <laughs> And the different valves act as different bugles. So uh, in essence, we have seven different bugles. If I press down the first valve, the second valve, and different combinations of the valves make different uh, pitches that we can go up and down on. How many different notes does the tuba have? Well, uh, that's, a, that's a tough one. Uh, it can start very low, like off the range of the piano, and depending on the size of the mouthpiece and just your, your own uh, lip composure, uh, you can play as high as you'd like to play. There's some players that can really screech out notes way at the top of the piano keyboard. So we have the widest range of any brass instrument. Thank you, students. Those were wonderful questions. Now, let's see if we can understand why we enjoy playing these instruments so very much. Well, they can perform all kinds of music. They can dance and play with melodies, and they can be very serious and beautiful as they sing their hearts out. Let's listen now to freshman euphonium soloist Ran Whittle as he and Ruth Morrow perform a part of Alexander Arutunian's concerto. The section opens with a very playful and exciting sort of tune and closes with a somber and haunting melody. Thank <laughs> you. 
Now, don't you think it would be lots of fun to be a tuba or euphonium player? Well, maybe someday some of you will play these beautiful brass instruments. But perhaps you are also wondering, what does an ensemble of these instruments sound like? Well, we're going to let you hear the tuba and euphonium ensemble perform a composition written some 400 years ago by the Italian composer Giovanni Gabrielli, a piece to be played especially in St. Mark's Cathedral in Venice. Listen and imagine yourself in that great cathedral as we perform Gabrielli's Canzona Personare Number 4. <laughs> Well, now you've heard the tuba and the euphonium as solo instruments and an ensemble. And you've been a terrific audience. But I'll bet you have some more questions for us. Who will be the first? What is the difference between a tuba and the euphonium? The difference is that the euphonium is about half the size of a tuba. The tuba obviously much bigger. And this extend, extends the range a lot further in, in, into the upper register so we can play higher and play more varied music. Where does the tuba come from? The tuba first came from um, Czechoslovakia in Germany, but now it's made all over the world. How much air does it take to play the tuba? It only takes enough to fill the instrument. Even people with small lung capacities can still play. In fact, there's tuba players now who, due to disease, only play with one lung, but they can get a gigantic sound. So it's a matter of efficiency rather than amount. How fast can you play? Every instrument has its limitations. Um, even, even violins, they re reach a point where they can't play any faster. And composers take this into account when they write pieces uh, for the instrument. Um, but as you get better and you're practicing, you practice and you, be able to, you become able to practice or to play faster as the more advanced you get in playing and the more years you spend practicing. What's the tube in the marching band called? The tube in a marching band is called the sousaphone. It sits on your shoulder and it has the bell over your head. very strong to play a tuba? Not at all. Basically, you just have to be strong enough to hold it in your lap and to hold it up, and if you march with it, to carry it. Um, tuba players come in all sizes. Even in um, our studio, we have 
a lot of players that are, you know, relatively small compared to some of the larger guys out here. So <laughs> it really doesn't take all that much strength at all. It's just more in your, um, in your uh, lung capacity and the intensity you use um, to play to uh, push the air forward. And you can always learn how, how to do that, regardless of how large you are. Is it very much music written for the tuba as a solo instrument? Well, uh, since the tuba evolved rather late in the history of instruments, we don't have a lot from earlier periods, but more and more we're getting a lot of good literature. Mr. Phillips and other people are uh, commissioning people to write for our instrument, and we have some very good pieces. We heard the Von Williams, and there's a piece by Hindemith, and some really wonderful pieces, but we need more, so keep them coming. How old were you when you started playing the tuba? Well, I started playing in about fourth grade like Jay did, and uh, I'm a sophomore now, so that's about 10 years plus maybe another year. In the interim, I've also taken up trombone and the other instruments, so it's not just staying with the phoneme. Thank you, students, for asking such exciting and interesting questions. I hope we've given you some answers and some things to think about, and that you will tell others about our musical encounter here today with the tuba and euphonium. To show our appreciation, we would like to share with you now our special tribute to one of America's truly great composers. He made many people happy with his music, and I think you will see why as we salute Duke Ellington. <laughs>
What do you hope to do when you graduate from Indiana University? When I graduate from IU, my degree will be in music and education, so I can continue performing, and also I plan to um, teach band in a junior high or um, public high school. Well, I too am looking for a music education degree once I get out, and I hope to do a high school, be a high school band director covering jazz band, stage band, concert band, etc. And uh, like I've done before in the past, I also want to take my trombone and maybe play some more musicals as I used to do. Well, I really enjoy playing the tuba, and uh, as long as I could be happy playing, that would be fine with me. I would enjoy playing in a brass quintet and chamber music groups and orchestra, a band, uh, contemporary music groups, anything that would let me uh, play the tuba a lot. That would be great. I'd like to go to graduate school, um, this would be in about four years, and pursue conducting and try to be an orchestral conductor. And it's, it's a really tough field, but there's a lot of places that you can fall short of being an orchestral conductor and still be happy. The um, important thing is just to be happy with what you're doing. I'd like to keep playing uh, the euphonium and try to improve the amount of literature that there is for euphonium and orchestra. The Indiana University Tuba Ensemble joins me in thanking all of you for being such a wonderful audience. And now to close our musical encounter, we want to perform the El Capitan March by the one and only John Philip Sousa, who gave his name to the Sousaphone, a proud member of the tuba and euphonium family. We hope we can get together again real soon. And now, El Capitan. <laughs>